Hello student, this is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor for figure 7 question 3b. Let's begin. Uh, go into your 2D drawing, 2D autographic drawing, where you can find this on page 7-64 on your notes. Alright, so you'll be presented by this drawing here. Let's begin by analyzing what and how shall we simplify it so that we can model it out in Autodesk Inventor. So the first step is always to simplify it. And what a better way to simplify it is by removing holes, such as this diameter 25, diameter tw uh, 16, and also this long hole. Next, the fillet and chamfer, like this R3. Okay, let's remove them. Let's ignore it. And ribs and webs. For this case, this example has no webs or ribbing. And lastly, are all secondary features such as uh, bosses, like these long bosses, long hole bosses, and these secondary features here. Okay, so what's left is actually this L shape here. Okay, so this L shape here measures at 20 mm thickness, uniform thickness across uh, the two lengths. And the longer length is at 125, and the shorter length is 65. So let's go into your inventor. Alright, so this is the final product that you are to create. So let, let, let me just rotate the view so that you can uh, study the whole model. How shall we create them? Alright, so let's begin by going into Files, clicking New. And under your matrix folder, double click on standard mm.ipt. Now, uh, you will be presented with a new, very empty sheet of uh, part drawing. So, go into your model browser, find on your left side of the inventor, find the origin folder, and click on the plus sign beside it. What happens is you are expanding the origin folder itself. So it shows all the default planes, the axis and the center point. So left click on the YZ plane, press the shift key on your keyboard and press the XY plane. Let go of your shift key, right mouse click and click on visibility. So what happened here is actually you are turning, you are activating all the default planes, the three default planes from the origin folder. So with this, we can actually begin your design. So let's recap. We are actually drawing this L shape here. All right, so let's go back into your inventor. Now select the XY plane, okay, by selecting the border here uh, to highlight it and click on create sketch here on the mini toolbar. Select the two-point rectangle here. Go over to the default projected origin, shown as this maroon dot here. And once you see a green dot, press the left key, and then drag it downwards to the left side. Now we have a rectangle shape, just a rough shape. Now we go back to the bottom left point of the first rectangle, and we will draw a smaller one, a smaller rectangle within the original, the larger rectangle. And then, with this case, when we have drawn it, if you notice, we have clearly drawn out a L-shaped region here. Next, under the sketch tab, under constraint panel, click on dimensions. We will apply 20mm here. Press the tick key. Let's just zoom it up and then apply here again. Okay, instead of typing 20, we can just click on this existing dimension here. So what happened is you have parametric following here. So when you change the dimensions here, this value will also change. Okay, uh, to know whether is it a dynamic dimension is by this fx uh, symbol here. Next. Let's continue on. We enter here 125, press the tick key, and lastly, this 65, and press the tick key. 
Next, we will do an extrusion. So click on finish sketch and click on the extrude tool here. Now select the profile, the L shape. Now let's go into the drawing to understand what kind of values, what kind of extrusion, how long do we need this L shape supposed to be. So from the plan view, we notice that the full extrusion is actually 80 and they are symmetry about this center line here. So let's go back into Inventor. So let's change this distance to 80 and instead of just one directional default uh, icon here, just click on symmetry and analyze the graphical window here. So they are going both ways, so 40 upwards and 40 downwards. Press the OK button and press the shift key with your middle mouse and hold it to rotate your view. So now we have the L shape here, the, 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 the most basic, the base shape of this diagram here. Next, we will start by drawing out this feature here. Okay, this feature here is actually having a circle with a rectangular value here. So if you can see here, the dimension given is R25 for the circular, uh, for the circle. And the rectangle is 30 by 50 because if you notice this is radius 25 if you times 2 is the diameter and the length of this rectangle is actually correspond to the diameter so it's 30 by 50 at the same time this shape itself is actually rotated about by 45 degree so uh, once you see this kind of examples, you knew you will know that you need to create a new plane, okay? Be it offset or rotated about an axis, uh, you just need to know that you need to create a new plane. So let's go back to Inventor, All right? So we have this uh, base shape here, the primary shape. Now under the work feature here, click on planes. Now. Let's go back to your 2D drawing. If you notice, this 45 degrees is actually dimension from the horizontal length <coughs> to this slanted line by 45 degree so let's go ahead go back to your inventor we will use this as your rotation the edge and we will use this horizontal plane to create that 45 degree so once you have clicked the axis and the horizontal plane or face you will get this mini toolbar uh, showing 90 degrees you just need to change it to 45 now let's analyze it further you notice that this is pointing downwards what we require is supposed to be is actually to go upwards so we just need to put a negative value right at the front okay so let's check your drawing again all right the angle is actually pointing upwards all right this is good now go back to inventor and press the tick key okay so now we have your shape here so click on this work plane number one, select it, and then create new sketch here. So let's recap. We need to draw a circle of R25 and a rectangle of 30 by 50. So first step to begin with, let's click on project geometry to project this center axis here. And then we will go into circle, use this projected uh, mid plane here as your reference so left click once and then we can draw the shape here now click on the two point rectangle and we will just draw it until this base here okay right click press ok next this line here needs to be touching this circular feature 
they will touch it on tangency. So we go under geometrical constraint here and click on tangent and we click on the line and click on the curvature. Next, under the constraint panel, click on dimensions and we will start adding more dimensions here. So this vertical height, it's 30. While this circular feature here, okay, if you click once, it's shown as a diameter. Alright, but however, in our drawing, it shows as a radius 25. So, what you need to do, do not left click yet, do not place the dimension yet, just have it hovering around. Right mouse click, under dimension type, click on radius. And now we can apply 25. Okay, let's right click, press OK to cancel out from the dimension feature. Our sketch is still green. Alright, so the next step, once you see a green sketch, you just need to click and hold and try to drag it around. So just drag it slowly. You don't need to rush. Okay, but while you are dragging it around, just try to analyze it closely. What's happening to your sketch? And then from there, you can come up with a battle plan. How to solve the issue. So for this case, if you zoom in slightly, you notice that this portion here, this line, isn't tangent to the circle. So from there, you can just click on tangent constraint, click on the vertical line, and click on the circle. And with just that extra constraint, yeah, you have a fully black sketch, which means it's a fully constrained sketch. All right. Now, we can finish our sketch. We will click on Extrude tool, select the sketch, and this time, if you analyze in your drawing, there's no distance given for the feature extrusion. Okay, however, from the drawing itself, you know that this feature here gets extruded all the way to the L shape. So this is your clue here. So go into your inventor again. Let's extrude it to next. Okay, by doing so, when you extrude to next, it will just add material until it reaches to a certain solid body. For this case, is the L shape. Done, and then you can press OK. All right, we have come about your that secondary feature. Next, let's do, let's finish up whatever is here. So we need to create the diameter 25 hole. And this diameter 25 is actually to a depth of 30 mm. Plus, there's actually this pointed end here at the end. All right, so take note. If the hole feature shown in the 2D drawing shows with our pointed end, you need to create it accordingly in your inventor file. So let's go into inventor. Now, press this hole tool. So the hole itself is actually concentric about this circular feature here. So click this as a starting surface and click a cylindrical feature here as your reference. So if you notice, once you have clicked the cylindrical feature, it gets concentric constraint about that round okay so let's enter 25 and this time instead of true all we we'll use the distance termination and we will change this to 30 mm let's just go to the side view study the diagram here and you notice that the pointed end is actually at 90 for my case so it should always be at 118. All right, so let's change that. Just double confirm. You never know when the value changes. So double confirm, and then you can press OK. So we have finished the top part here. Now let's conquer this side here. All right, which means this long hole extrusion plus the long hole itself. 
okay so uh, from here you notice that this r25 is actually sharing about the same center as your long hole so that can be a clue file for you so let's create the fillet first the r25 okay so r25 there's one here two and from the plan view the third one and the fourth one so let's go into the inventor press the fillet tool let me drag it up here and change this value to 25 enter and select these edges here okay so in case where you have selected wrongly just press the shift key and hover over back to your line that you have accidentally selected okay just left click once more and it will get deselected so one two three four you're happy with it press ok next we're going to this vertical face select it the mini toolbar will appear and we can click on the create sketch now we can use the project geometry again select this curvature here and here and now expand the arrow under the rectangular tool you will notice there's this slot center to center so we will use this from this point to this point and then we will just extend to get the width of the uh, slot shape now go into dimension left click on this and here and the value is 24 okay so let's enter 24 press the tick key and we will extrude this by let's trace it upwards this is actually 8 mm so let's go back to inventor finish your sketch extrude by 8 mm and press enter All right now let's go back to your 2d drawing if you notice the long hole itself is actually having a width of 12 All right the length is 42 however if you analyze it closely it's actually just equal distance all around so let me show you how to do this left click on the slot itself the slot extrusion create a new sketch again we will use this project geometry but instead of selecting one by one okay means I, I, if you see here i have selected four times you can just select the face of it with with, with that one click you can actually select all four edges there all right so next we will use an offset tool here and we will offset it inwards plus we will add a dimensions to it okay the width is actually 12 and next finish your sketch click on extrude to select this long hole feature and we will cut it all the way through and press ok Okay, we are almost there a little bit more next let's do the 30 CRS means center to center 30 mm center to center of these two holes and the two holes of diameter 16 here is actually 100 mm away from this edge here, the, 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 the short edge all right so let's go back to inventor select this top surface here create a new sketch now you can click on line just roughly sketch it where you need the hole to be right mouse click press ok press dimensions here here to here it's 100 and the hole centers is actually 30 right mouse click and then press ok to end your uh, dimensioning tool 
Next, we just need to click on this dot, hold on to it and drag it up. If you notice, this line is actually not placed right in the middle here. Okay, the midpoint is not placed here. So if you want to take the midpoint, constrain it to this line itself, okay, the, the plane itself, we can use coincident constraint over until you see a green dot on the line, which means that's the midpoint, and select your axis or plane. And with that, we have brought that line right in the middle in between that uh, plane itself. Click on finish sketch, press the whole tool again. Now, the line itself, there's two end points here. So using that end, end points of the line, we can use it as a input geometry for the whole creation. So click on this one and two. Let's change it to be a simple hole, none for the seating, termination is true all, and the diameter is actually 16. And press OK. Alright, lastly, we just need to add the fillet here. So, click on the fillet tool, select this edge, and change the radius here to our tree and press OK. Now, we can press the F6 key, right? Just analyze it to make sure that it's the same as your drawing. And to deactivate all this work plane, you can press the Control key and the close square bracket to off all the default planes or you can press the alternate close square bracket to switch off the place that you have just created. So we have done this portion here. Lastly, you just need to go into part under the model browser, right mouse click, select the eye properties, under the physical tab, click on update and check with your teaching staff or your lecturer, what is the volume as compared to his model, alright? That, that's one way to verify whether you have done your modeling correctly. So in this case, my volume is actually 2960.43 uh, cubic millimeter, okay? So yours might be slightly off by a little bit, that's fine, okay? But it should not be off too, too far off, alright? So we have come to the end of the video. Thank you very much.